Explorate. What's up? I'm Chelsea and you're watching my channel, Chelsea Explores. And today we're exploring birth. Which is weird. It's still weird to think that I'm going to be a mom. Anyways, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the things that I am doing to prepare for hopefully having an unmedicated natural birth. I still feel weird vlogging about this, but there are a ton of things that I have learned throughout this pregnancy that I literally had no idea about. So I just wanted to share what I've learned, share my experience with you in hopes to encourage you and make you feel a little more comfortable if you are hopefully planning to have a natural unmedicated birth as well. To be honest, I don't know where this hippy dippy side of me came from. In the past year, I've kind of become this more um, holistic, like having this holistic approach to life, um, treating my body more holistically, like the Eastern medicine side versus Western medicine. And anyways, I'm here full force diving in to this whole holistic side of natural birth. And it feels weird, but I'm here for it and I'm here to share it with you. Whatever way you plan to give birth is absolutely unique and beautiful to you and your experience. So I'm just making this video in hopes to encourage others um, and hear about what I've learned along the way and the steps that I am taking to hopefully prepare for this natural birth. So here are the things that I'm doing to hopefully prepare my mind and body, both mentally and physically for this experience. Before we hop into this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I post a new video every single Tuesday from talking about travel vlogs to destination guides to now pregnancy tips and tricks. All right, so this video may be a little long, so I hope you stick with me until the end because there's a lot of good stuff in here. So I took some notes on everything that I wanted to share with you. I didn't want to forget all the things that I've been doing. I decided that the best thing to do would be to break it down by trimesters for you, just to keep it kind of organized. So let's start with the first trimester. Okay, so the first trimester, as you probably know, is weeks one through 12. I actually found out I was pregnant around the six week mark. I was in Yosemite leading a group trip with a bunch of girls, like 10 girls, and we were there for about a week after they all left, something in me was like, I just, I should take a test. And so I went to the little market inside Yosemite Valley. Thankfully they had a pregnancy test, went to the bathrooms, like the visitor's bathrooms and took a test and yep, it was positive. I was in shock. It came with two tests, so I took another one because I was like, there's no way. But there was a way. And I had planned to be in Yosemite for another four days all by myself, just kind of exploring. And so I kept that little secret to myself for four days until I could come home and tell my husband. I wanted to um, tell him in person and not over the phone. So long story short, I came home while he was out at work. I decorated the house and here's a little picture of what I decorated it like. And to say the least, we were both in shock. At 11 weeks, I actually got the you know what thing that's going around in the world. And let me just say that sucked. Having that on top of the first trimester symptoms is not fun. So I was literally on the couch. It's hard to say whether it was from pregnancy or that, but I was on the couch for probably three weeks straight. Couldn't do anything. It was hard to breathe. Uh, walking was hard, I was nauseous, no food other than Honey Nut Cheerios sounded good. So honestly, what I'm trying to say here is the first trimester is way more rough than I thought it would be. I recommend for you guys that just take it day by day in the first trimester, like let your body rest, just let it do what it needs to do. Don't overdo it because this is like a very rough time. Eat, give yourself some grace. I literally, the only things that sounded good, like I said, was Honey Nut Cheerios and greasy fast food. And there were definitely days where I was like, is this gonna be my life 
for the rest of my life and I was so discouraged because I had worked so hard on being a healthy eater that I felt like everything was reverting but it gets better. In the first trimester something that I recommend is to start thinking about what kind of birth you have or want to have. A lot of people maybe actually have already thought about this before they got pregnant. It's just never something that I really actually sat down and thought about so this is something I had to think about in the first trimester and what I mean by that is like whether or not you want to give birth in a hospital at home have a midwife go to a birthing center so start your research and try to figure out what you want and then after a little bit of research um, and just really thinking about what I wanted to do I knew that I wanted to try to give an unmedicated birth. And the way that I had researched and what I found is that the best thing you can do, well, not the best thing, but um, you can hire a doula. So I knew I wanted to be in a hospital. The nurse side of me was like, I don't think I can do a home birth just because my fears of not being in a hospital and not being close to interventions if needed um, scared me a bit. So I felt like, for me personally, a good combo was hiring a doula. Whew, I'm out of breath. It's a lot of work talking at this late in pregnancy. <laughs> Anyways, so I started researching doulas, talking to my friends, seeing if they had any recommendations, and found one in the San Diego area. Now, I knew a doula would be good for both Dan and I so that we could just focus on us do during the birth and the doula could focus on providing me with pain relieving techniques or things like that. I also knew that a doula would be a good resource to have in times of like high level stress and anxiety if something were going awry or wrong. Um, Dan isn't a medical professional. I know the hospital nursing world, but I was an ER nurse, so labor and delivery is not my specialty, uh, not my thing at all. So I knew that she would be a good resource to have there so we could look to her and be like, okay, is this an action that we need to take or are they just being a little over the top on things? Yeah, so to recap, first trimester, just let your body do what it needs to do. Eat the things that sound good, if you need to sleep or lay on the couch all day, do it. Don't force yourself to exercise if you don't feel like it because um, you might feel pretty crappy. And then start thinking about like what kind of birth you ha wanna have and whether you wanna hire an OB, a midwife, a doula. Um, so those are the three main things for the first trimester that I would recommend. Alrighty, moving on to the second trimester. So second trimester is 13 weeks to 26 weeks. And for me personally, by 13 weeks, I started to finally feel a little bit better. The nausea began to subside. I started to eat foods again, like real foods. First trimester, eggs sounded absolutely terrible. Second trimester, I was like, okay, I can try some eggs again. So the food versions were kind of diminishing and I was starting to have a little bit more energy and less nausea. So mentally, I was, so thankful that these symptoms were starting to subside because they were getting to me and I was starting to worry that this was going to be my life for forever. It's hard to not be in that mental state when you're in it. So let's talk about some of the things that I did in the second trimester to hopefully help prepare me for a natural birth. So the first thing I did was I found a pelvic floor specialist and we had a one hour meeting together where she just kind of taught me some techniques about how to keep my pelvic floor stable while working out and how to just engage my pelvic floor, I guess, during pregnancy. Hopefully help things, prevent things down the road like back pain and urinary incontinence and diastasis recti. Another thing that I focused on in my second trimester was getting back into working out. For me, Exercising and working out is what keeps me mentally and physically healthy. So I wanted to make sure to get that routine back into my day-to-day -day life. I had this goal to remain fit throughout pregnancy and be able to lift heavy weights like 
deadlift and squat and just use heavy lifted weights. So I began lifting weights again in our home gym. And that was until um, we left for our Europe trip. Now you may be asking what Europe trip are you talking about? Well, my husband and I actually decided we wanted to do this long extended baby moon. So we decided to go to Europe for two and a half months in the middle of my second trimester. I have a whole video on that you can watch here on traveling during pregnancy and some of my tips. So make sure to check that out. We were in Europe from 20 weeks to about 31 weeks. During this time, we were free from work. We had both quit our jobs. So while I was in Europe, I still really wanted to focus on remaining fit and healthy. So we kind of came up with a routine and tried to stick to that as much as we could. Now, I couldn't lift heavy weights or it was a lot harder to lift heavy weights, obviously, while traveling throughout Europe. The places we stayed just didn't have gyms with heavy weights. So what I focused on was stretching. We did 10 minutes of daily stretching. And within that stretching, I actually worked on um, holding a squat. I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> so holding a squat like this. I don't know, I heard that was helpful in pregnancy, but I wanted to encourage you because at the beginning, I could only hold it for about 15 seconds with my heels lifted off the ground. And now I can hold for like two, two and a half minutes. So I am very impressed with myself. I have heard that is helpful in labor. I'm not sure, we'll find out, but that's something I focused on. And then if we were able to find a gym, we did pay out of pocket to go to some gyms in Europe in order to lift some heavier weights. But if we couldn't find a gym, we did bring our like booty bands with us. Um, so we just did some exercises in our Airbnbs to hopefully stay fit. However, the biggest thing I think as far as fitness goes while we were traveling was we averaged around 15,000 to 20,000 steps a day. And I have heard walking is super good to help with labor and natural birth. So I'm really hoping that works out and all those steps like that we did <laughs> and all that shortness of breath and feeling tired and feet aching really helps. We'll see. Another thing that I focused on in my second trimester was eating healthy. Like I said, the food aversions were going aside. So while we were traveling, we focused on remaining healthy. So we found Airbnbs that had kitchens. So this obviously applies to living at home as well. We cooked all our own food for the most part, made sure to get our greens in at least like one salad a day and a veggie with dinner as much as we could. I think it's super important to eat as healthy as you can as soon as those food aversions go away and you can uh, get back to eating normal. I think this will help. As well as I've heard protein, your protein intake helps with birth. Um, so I made sure to either drink protein drinks or try to get my protein in through um, meat. I'm not a vegan and other Sources though, like beans and peanut butter, etc. It is also essential for blood clotting, which is one of my biggest fears about giving labor is bleeding. So I'm hoping that my protein intake will help with that. And then in the second trimester, Dan and I really focused on um, finding a birth course that we wanted to take. <clears throat> a lot of hospitals offer birth courses this wasn't really an option for us, although it could have been because most hospitals courses are now on, are now online because of what's going on in the world. But anyways, I didn't want to do a hospital birth course because I knew it wasn't focused on a natural birth mindset. We found an online video course. It's called Mama Natural and I highly recommend this course. It's eight videos long. They teach you a ton of stuff. Stuff I just like, I know I learned in nursing school but didn't remember, but also nursing school didn't really focus on like having a natural unmedicated birth. But this course really kind of goes through it all. They are, they're 
biased but unbiased at the same time. They truly tell you everything that could happen. They go through all the drugs that you could have. They list the side effects of them and what they're for. They're definitely not pushy with the natural side, but they do promote it. But I felt like it was a very fair course and would be good for anyone, even if you're not planning to have a natural unmedicated birth. Like I truly felt like it was a great, very knowledgeable course that everyone should take. So I'm actually gonna link the course in the description box below. You can check it out. Again, I highly recommend it. They have a book. I also bought the book and have been reading it. It goes week by week. And then they have a website. They have a Facebook community group with tons of people asking questions and they just have a ton of resources. So I, I really do recommend this course. And then the last thing um, that doesn't quite apply to everyone, maybe it does, in the second trimester is I looked more into what type of hospital I wanted to give birth at. And after a little bit of research, I realized the hospital I had originally signed up to give birth at was not exactly what I wanted or what I was looking for, like I had thought it had been. So I would just recommend do your research, talk to people about what kind of place you want. And the place I ended up deciding on is more of a birthing center, but still within the hospital. So you get to stay in your same room the entire time, which is not like normal hospitals. Usually they move you around. And so I'm excited that we get to stay in the same room the whole time. There is a tub that you can labor in, which I think will be super useful for me personally, because when I get back pain, heat um, or sitting in the bathtub helps my back. So I'm hoping that will be beneficial for me. You cannot do a water birth, but you can labor in the tub. And this birth center just has more of a natural mindset, but you're still right in the hospital. So if you need medical intervention, it is right there. Let's move on to the third trimester. So this is from 27 weeks to the end. And this trimester, I just focused all about having like all my ducks in a row. I am an anal planner and having things lined up is what makes me happy. I make a thousand lists. So yeah, this trimester was just focused on having all those ducks in a row. Things like having your hospital bag ready and packed, I'm going to eventually link my video here as to what I plan to bring to the hospital with me. I do a lot of research and I read a ton of blogs on what to bring, so I'm hoping I covered all my bases with what's in the hospital bag with also not bringing too much at the same time. I want it to be like a combo of the minimalist versus overpacking vibe, like a nice happy medium. So having your hospital bag packed and ready to go, having the nursery ready. ready. So I'm sitting in the nursery right now. It's actually not completely done. By the time I'm making this video, I need to put some curtains up and stuff. I know the baby won't be sleeping in here for like probably the first six months, but what I've heard and researched is you think you don't have time now, you're definitely not gonna have time when the baby comes. So just have it all done so you don't have to worry about it. The next thing would be to obviously have your baby shower. Now my one tip for this is, I would say have your baby shower sooner than you think you should. Mine is actually, well by the time I post this video, it'll have happened, but I would have recommended having it prior to when I did. So I will be about 36 weeks when my baby shower is occurring and it makes me a little stressed out that I don't have things. I just want to kind of buy everything and Dan, my husband, is like, don't buy it until after your baby shower and I just want to get things done. But I'm trying to be patient and that's why it's my recommendation to have it earlier in your pregnancy. I recommend getting your house deep cleaned who doesn't love a good clean house? Hire someone to do it. Just pay the person to do it. They're gonna really deep clean. If you live in San Diego, I have a great recommendation. Her name's Athena. She does a wonderful job, uses all natural clean products. So I will link her Instagram handle here below where you can reach out to her and get her cleaning your house as well. 
Okay, so let's talk about like details of the last trimester, kind of week by week, and what I am doing. Okay, so these things are specifically for helping you prepare for a natural birth. So at 32 weeks, I started drinking this red raspberry leaf tea. Can you see that? I just got it off of Amazon. At 32 weeks, I started drinking one cup a day of this. And then at 34 weeks, I started drinking two cups a day. I actually just put two bags in one cup. And then at 36 weeks, it's three to four cups a day of this red raspberry leaf tea. Research has shown that it actually shortens the stages of labor. And I'm just gonna read this to you. So the fragrant compounds found in red raspberry leaves are known to help tone and tighten muscles in the pelvic area, including the walls of your uterus, which can help make delivery easier. After a study done on women, it show, showed that those who drink red raspberry leaf tea in the last stage of pregnancy had a shorter labor. Now there's different recommendations on to when you should actually start drinking this tea. So do check with your OB or midwife on when you should start this. And I was told that if you do feel contractions after or while drinking the tea, then stop. I also read that a lot of people don't like the taste of the tea, which I was very nervous about because I'm a super picky eater. But honestly, I, I think the tea doesn't taste bad. If anything, it doesn't, it tastes really bland. It doesn't taste like anything. I would just chug it down, get it down, and I would not say it's bad at all. Um, what I read is you can add a little bit of like stevia or something if you really need to sweeten it up, but I don't think it's bad. And that means a lot coming from me. And then at 36 weeks, I will add in six dates a day. Now, I don't like the taste of dates, so I'll be either adding them into my smoothies, or what I do like is like the date balls that also have like chocolate or peanut butter or quinoa mixed together with it. So I'm gonna plan to make those and eat those. Why dates, you ask? Well, so researchers discovered that the woman who ate six dates a day for four weeks had a shorter labor, a higher mean cervical dilation, and, and had more intact membranes upon arrival at the hospital. They also found that women who ate dates had significantly less need for medical intervention to induce or speed up labor compared to those who did not eat dates. I don't know, maybe all this is hocus pocus, but I'm gonna try it because why not? It's not hard things to try and I think I would be willing to do anything almost and try anything in order to have a natural, unmedicated, hopefully painless birth. And then I could go into so much more about what I'm bringing to the hospital, but I'll leave that to my, what I'm bringing in my hospital bag and my doula's bringing a lot of stuff, but I plan to bring like lavender essential oils and peppermint essential oils, the lavender to help calm during birth and peppermint to help with nausea, as well as hard candies to suck on. The last thing I wanted to say that I'm doing to prepare for my natural birth during this third trimester is I'm continuing the daily stretching, the 10 minutes of daily stretching, as well as trying to get 10,000 steps a day because I've heard walking is very beneficial. However, I would say I'm mostly aver averaging around 7,000 to 8,000 steps a day, which honestly I'm happy with because it's getting a lot harder to walk and a lot harder to breathe as I walk. There's a lot of things that happen in the third trimester. I feel like it's almost overwhelming that I feel like I have to do or want to do to hopefully help prepare me for having that natural birth. But again, like I said, I'm kind of willing to try anything and everything and hoping that something sticks and something makes my labor shorter. So there you have it. I hope you found this video inspirational and educational, informative and just I hope you feel encouraged after watching it. And I just wanted to share my journey with you and what I've been doing to prepare for a natural birth. Um, obviously, I have not given birth yet, so I don't know if any of these things will work. But 
I am hoping to make a birth vlog if I have my camera ready to go and the battery charged and the memory card clear. Um, and we'll see if any of these things were beneficial in the end. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.